Okay, guys. Uh, this is a presentation that I gave um, a few years back now. Um, I don't have my script handy, but um, if everyone will just bear with me, I can kind of wing it. Does that work for everybody? Yes. Okay. So um, I thought this would be a topical thing to cover um, since I know we had a lot of questions about um, queens and this is a time of year we get a lot of questions about hives going queenless. Um, so this is about requeening the natural way. This is not about queen breeding. This is just stuff that applies to, you know, your backyard beekeeping situation. Um, it's really important to know um, how the requeening process works because every normal hive is eventually going to requeen whether you want to or not. Um, unlike our ancestors, we're finding that queens now only live a year or two as opposed to five years not being, you know, uncommon back in the uh, mists of time. And uh, queens, you know, they're mortal like everything else. They, they can die. Um, you can lose them to swarming and to this after swarming that we were talking about, secondary swarms. Um, your bees can decide to supersede your queen or they may decide to ball your queen for one reason or another, killing her. Um, she can have an accident like, you know, I'm sure nobody here has ever accidentally squished a queen, um, but you know, some clumsy person might hit a queen with their, their hive tool or roll her between two frames. Um, they can get uh, diseases just like the other bees can um, and die of the diseases and they can die of the uh, mites in the hive that we we're just talking about. Um, and they can also uh, fail to come back from their mating flight for various reasons, including simple things like bird predation. So uh, I'm gonna talk about some myths and misconceptions versus what the reality is, um, some tools you can use um, in learning about your hive and how queen right it is, how to tell if your hive is queen right, which is really important, um, how you're gonna make your own replacement queens the easy way. I'm gonna talk about that uh, controversial topic of laying workers. And like I said, this is not about commercial methods for making, uh, uh, queens like uh, grafting or on the spot queen grafting, that kind of stuff. Just the natural way that it happens in hives without a lot of human intervention. So um, what are some misconceptions? I hear a lot of people saying things like, oh, well, my, my queen, she just left one day. Well, queens don't suddenly get itchy feet and decide to just wander off without the rest of their bees. Um, if they, your queen left your hive, um, she probably did so for a very good reason, like everybody else decided that she was going to need to swarm now. Um, a lot of people think they can only raise their queen uh, in the springtime, um, but actually here in the Bay Area, you can manage to uh, raise and mate a queen any month of the year. Um, I have actually successfully had a queen return from a mating flight um, New Year's Day one year, so right in the dead of, of what is our winter. Um, some people think that queen rearing is something that only experts should do, but as I said before, every hive pretty much is going to raise a queen at some point if you take reasonable care of it, so it's something that I think everyone should be a little familiar with. Uh, people think that only the kind of hives that you buy or that you graft are going to be good enough, um, but frankly, you can make a very good queen um, just with a natural method, just as bees have been doing for a very long time. Big, big myth that I see going around a lot is people expecting that immediately after swarming that new queen that is in the uh, old hive that the swarm emerged for is going to boom, just be laying eggs. Um, that's just not true. Um, it takes a while for that queen after she has emerged, as Peter was talking about, she needs to do this thing called hardening for about a week, and then she needs to go on her mating flights. And then she kind of sits around and thinks about that for nearly a week, all before she lays even her first tiny little patch of eggs. So you do really have to be quite patient when waiting for your queens to get mated. And um, if you have a swarm with a, uh, it's a secondary swarm, it may in fact have a virgin queen in it and you need to wait for her to go and get mated and to think about it for a week and then start laying. 
Um, heard a lot of people say, oh, well, I've got lots of drones in my hive, so she's, she doesn't need to leave the mate, or I'm, I'm raising lots of drones so that my queen will have masculine company. Um, and that's kind of great as a little joke, but uh, queens actually go out of their way to not mate with drones from their own hive, um, partly because it can lead to too much inbreeding, um, which can lead to uh, spotty brood patterns. Um, they only mate um, with drones from not the nearest drone congregation area, but the next nearest drone congregation area to try to avoid their own brothers um, at those sites. Um, a lot of people get scared um, when they need to requeen a hive um, that has failed to queen. They don't want to move a frame of hive out of another hive. I don't want to, don't want to move a frame of brood out of another hive into uh, the queenless hive because they're worried it's going to deplete that hive. Um, but most hives can spare a few eggs to uh, another colony. It's really not a big deal. So what's the truth of the matter? Um, the fact is, is that bees really, 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 really want to make you a queen and want to make you a pretty good queen. And uh, usually the most important thing you need to do is to just let it happen and not interfere with the process. Um, bear in mind that queen rearing is um, expensive in terms of labor from the queenless hive. Um, they put so much effort into feeding those cells and raising up uh, those queens that they actually will allow half of the open worker brood in the hive to die um, of starvation because they are concentrating that effort on the queen. But like I said, um, taking a few eggs from the donor hive um, really doesn't do a lot of uh, damage to it at all. It is the queen rearing hive that is really putting the big investment in here. So it's really all about just waiting and being patient. So here's some things that I recommend um, that you have around when you're trying to requeen your hive. Um, one is just a, a calendar. I'm sure everybody here knows how to work a calendar. Um, it's just really your most important um, tool in making sure that you are not opening your hive at the wrong point in this process. Um, I recommend you get a good uh, queen slash worker life cycle chart. And I think this presentation, I made up one of my own and there's one online that I'm always referencing and linking to. If I didn't link to it here, I'll uh, give a link in the chat later. You want a good flashlight. Um, what makes a good flashlight? My joke is if you look at your flashlight and the name on your flashlight um, is something other than a company that only makes flashlights, that's not a good flashlight. That's just a uh, souvenir or swag from a trade show or something and it's not a good flashlight. Get yourself a really good flashlight. Um, get yourself a cheap magnifier from the dollar store, especially if your eyes aren't getting any younger. This is this flashlight, this magnifier is because we want to be able to see those uh, first uh, few days worth of eggs in the uh, completely requeened hive. We don't want to have to wait weeks and weeks before we see capped brood um, or before we see big fat older larvae in there. We want to be able to detect it when it's at a fairly early stage. Um, you Obviously you need to have the right attitude. Uh, queen rearing can be a bit confusing, but it is not a magical process. It is basically a natural process that you can understand using science. Um, if you are trying to produce a queen in a hive, that hive must have eggs or extremely young larvae, those that are less than three days old, um, of what is normally worker brood, so uh, diploid um, eggs, diploid larvae, um, because those are what is the hive is capable of raising up into a queen. Uh, you do need to have drones somewhere in your area, but luckily there's probably, if not your neighbor's hive, there's probably drones uh, out in a hollow tree somewhere. And uh, the good news is that in our area, because of some hives manage to cling on to dro drones, either into the winter or um, completely queenless hives that are failing in the winter produce tons of drones. Um, they're pretty much always some available, enough to get the job done. 
you want good weather the week that your uh, queens are mating. Now, of course, you don't control the weather and often you're not controlling when your hive is requeening, but in conjunction with your calendar, you're gonna to wanna to keep an eye on that because that's going to possibly change your plan um, when you're checking your hive for whether it has produced a laying queen. And most of all, you need to um, correctly use your time and exercise your patience. So here is a slightly confusing uh, chart that I recommend that everybody take a look at and take a screenshot of if they can. Um, and I'm going to explain what you're going to see here. So this is represents days. Um, oops. Yeah. Back. Um, and what you have on the top row in blue in each day is what is happening with the worker brood. Okay, blue is worker brood. Why am I talking about worker brood when we're talking about queens? You'll explain that as we go along here. So this is W for worker. So this line, this line, this line, this line is all about workers. Uh, in purple here, royal purple for our queen, we have what's happening with the um, egg that is laid that is going to become a queen, okay? So when you are, you have a hive that is going to make a queen, um, there is an egg that is going to end up becoming what your queen is. Um, usually there's more than one, we're just following the life cycle of one here. So for the first three days, that egg is just an egg. Same for all B eggs. They go for three, actually it's three and a half, but we're gonna say three for simplicity. Oops. Oops. Let's give Elizabeth's um, connection a minute to try and reestablish. Yep. Now she's muted. <laughs> okay, you hear me now? Yep, yes. you're back. Okay, um, so day seven, something magical yeah. happens. Um, the larva becomes too old to be the flexible in the way where it could become either a queen or a worker. It becomes committed to becoming one or the other. I'm not gonna get into how that happens and so forth. Just know from day, se from day uh, seven on, the die is cast. Elizabeth, queen could you cells... put your image back up again, please? I'm sorry? Could you put your image back up again? Uh, I am, let's see, my, my I must have gone unshared, hang on. Do, do, do. do you see it now? Uh, no, it's not, not presenting. Quite yet. Oh, did. Did she have to reconnect? Did she, do you need to re-enable her, Alec? No, she's co-host still, or at least it shows me is. Okay. Mm, I'm gonna back out and log in again, guys, okay? Because okay. it's not giving me the option to reshare. Just one second. Cool. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> So for you beginners, um, re-cleaning might seem like kind of a distant possibility. Um, however, uh, I think a lot of you will end up with pretty strong colonies and may decide to split this fall so that you have uh, backup bees going into winter. Um, so this is a pretty valuable talk, maybe not for immediately if you've just established a colony for the first time, but um, 
uh, as, as you go into the fall or early next year, um, you may decide to split for swarm management as well. And all of this becomes relevant because when you do a split, you take your queen from, um, from one hive and put her in a new hive along with some portion of the bees, depending upon what kind of split you're doing. Um, and then uh, the, you leave some worker, workers and some existing frames of eggs um, or sometimes queen cells that have already been established um, to create new queens. So um, all of this becomes pretty important as you continue your beekeeping journey. I need to share again, sorry. All right, okay, hi. Make co-host. You are now a co-host. There we go. Okay. Um, so uh, Alex was just commenting about how you'll need this next year. Some of you may need to know about this uh, even this year because it is not uncommon um, for packages and uh, new swarms to decide to requeen themselves. So it does help to, to know this even in your, in your first year. Um, so I think I got cut off about uh, when I was talking about how after day six, the larvae are committed. They're going to become either a queen or they're going to become um, a worker. So um, on day eight, very, very early in this process, um, the queen cell actually gets uh, sealed um, and becomes a capped uh, pupa at that point. Now, um, for the next several days, it is not just capped, it is also what we call sensitive. That means that at this stage, if you shake that queen cell, if you flip it upside down because you pull the frame out of your um, colony and flip it over to look at the other side, um, the queen will basically get birth defects. Um, often they will develop without any wings, um, which of course is a disaster uh, for the hive. So it's very important that if you um, have sealed queen cells um, in your hive that you not go in there and start mucking about with every single one of them. Otherwise you may end up without a viable queen. So after it has gone through being capped for about a week, um, the, on day 16, the queen emerges from the cell. Um, now she's probably emerging with maybe five or six of her sisters. And if the hive is uh, not planning on casting secondary swarms, uh, they will battle each other until there is only one um, left alive. That remaining queen then spends about a week doing this thing called hardening. Um, she actually shrinks in size. Um, and this is one of the reasons that I tell people don't go looking, trying to find your virgin in the hive um, in this period between uh, day 16 and uh, about day 28, um, because she is very, very hard to find. You might be good at finding laying queens. They're fat, they're slow. They kind of waddle around the frame. They have a retinue. They're easier to spot. Um, virgins are extremely difficult. Um, I have failed to find virgin queens in a five frame mating nook after looking at every frame three times. Um, <laughs> so, it's not a good idea to go in there looking for her because it is very difficult. And the other thing is, is that at this stage, she is not producing a lot of good queen pheromone. And so the bees kind of normally barely pay any attention to you, to her, um, except to feed her when she asks. But if you go in there and you start disturbing the hive and they decide that they're under attack, um, they may actually sting that virgin queen to death. Um, so one of the biggest mistakes you can make is to go in and start tearing your hive apart right after it's swarmed or right after um, you know that it has uh, started queen cells um, trying to find that, that virgin. You may, that's actually the worst thing that you can do at that point. So she hardens, 
at this point. She shrinks, she does her orientation flight, she becomes strong enough to go on her mating flight. Um, that's going to happen someday, sometime around day 22 or 23, weather permitting. If it's really, really cold in this time period, if it's really, really wet, if it's really, really windy, she may actually postpone her mating flight um, up to a couple of weeks. She can't postpone it more than a couple of weeks or she will become a drone layer forever. She will never mate. Um, but you know, if you know that your mating flight is coming up for your queen, mark your calendar and check the weather on those days um, to make sure that that was good mating weather. As I said, after she mates, she kind of hangs around and thinks about things for a few more days. And then the earliest day she might lay her first egg is the 27th. Now, that doesn't mean that on the 27th, you can bust open the hive and you know find sheets and sheets and sheets of brood. That means one little tiny patch of eggs. Um, and she may be doing weird things like laying two eggs in a cell at first because she's not very good at this yet. Um, so I usually recommend that people wait um, until more like day 30 or so before they go in with that flashlight and start looking for eggs. You know, it gives her a chance to get in there, to start laying really well, to really be producing a lot of queen pheromone so that she doesn't get accidentally balled by her own workers. Um, and so that there's just a big enough patch of eggs to find. Now. Of course, when you go into your hive, you maybe don't know exactly where you are in this process. So often people say, I went into my hive and I'm queenless. Um, do I need to go and get a new queen? Well, as you can see, um, this can be a very long period of being queenless. So if you squished your queen on day one or um, you otherwise removed a queen or they swarmed, which usually they do around this time. But again, it's kind of weather dependent. So it could be um, at any point in this process, just about. Um, it can be quite um, a long period where there is no queen or no detectable queen or one of these very super sensitive uh, virgin queens in the hive. So I always tell people, take a look um, at what's going on with your worker brood. Because of course, if your queen died this day, um, she will have not laid any more eggs, obviously. So that means that the worker eggs are, that were eggs on that day, they can't, there won't be any more. So they're kind of acting as a timer or a calendar for your process. So if you look in your hive, and you see plenty of worker eggs, you're either in these first three days or your hive is queen right. If you're going in there and you start to see, oh look, it looks like some queen cups have something in them, um, seems to be developing, and I still have lots of young worker larvae as well as old worker larvae and old capped brood, then you know that you're more about this time period. If you go into your hive and you only see capped worker brood, then you can, with or without queen cells, you know that you are somewhere in this period. Once you get to day 21, that's when all your worker brood that was uh, born was laid at the same time as your queen eggs, they've already emerged. So if you go into a hive and you see no queen and absolutely zero worker brood, hopefully you are in your final week of requeening. And it isn't a good idea to then go in and introduce a new queen because you're going to have one in a week. So 
keep this uh, calendar handy, I guess, because you can refer to it and you can compare it to what you see in your own hive. And that will help you to mark your calendar and know when is gonna be like day 30 or so when you should be looking for those new eggs from your new queen. So uh, people are saying, how do I know if my hive is queen right? I say it's easy as one, two, three. First of all, do you see eggs? in your hive. Um, if you have the black foundation or some uh, older comb, it's a lot easier to see than it is on this light colored honeycomb. Next question, are they in worker cells as opposed to drone cells? Not talking about drones at any point um, when I'm talking about these eggs. I'm only talking about worker or queen eggs. And are there just one egg, is there just one egg in each cell? usually pretty nicely centered. So if you see solitary eggs in your worker cells, you know that you had a laying queen three days ago. And like I said, use that good flashlight, use a magnifier, try using black foundation. Um, and don't freak out if you see the occasional double egg in a cell, especially with a young queen. Sometimes they just mess up and lay a double egg. If you don't see eggs, then you probably don't have a queen in your hive, um, or at least you don't have a mated laying queen in your hive. So you have to go with what else do you observe? Like I said, do you see any worker larvae, any open worker brood? Do you see any worker pupa, a capped brood? So here you see we have um, open larva of various ages getting smaller and smaller over here, big fat larva here, and then we also have capped pupa over here. And then the other question is, go back and look at your records. There was a great discussion of record keeping um, on the Google group this week. And when did you last see worker eggs, worker larva, worker pupa? Because that can be really helpful when you get into this time period here when you don't see anything. But if you know that when you were in the hive three weeks ago, you were seeing um, open brood, then you know, oh, I'm probably around like, the early 20s in the, so far as the days go here. Highly recommend that you laminate a life cycle chart that shows both queen and worker development stages and you keep that in your kit um, or you can just memorize the important dates. Um, I keep mine on my refrigerator and I really highly recommend getting one as a tattoo. It's just the most handy beekeeping uh, thing ever. So, what do you do depending on what you see in your hive? So if you see those solitary worker eggs, you don't need to do anything. You're probably queen, right? Unless you know that you dropped your hive tool on your poor queen. If you see open worker brood, um, but you're seeing signs of queen rearing, you're seeing cells starting, you're seeing cups that have something in it, um, then you're probably going to be at the stage where you want to close your hive and mark your calendar for inspection at least 23 days out because you probably up in this area here you're in like the first week week and a half if you see signs of queer rearing and you see capped worker brood then you're gonna close your hive. You're gonna mark your calendar for inspection at least 17 days out again, because then you know you're somewhere in this two week period here where the worker brood is capped and the queen is doing who knows what. And absolutely be sure that you do not flip capped queen cells around or jostle, jar them, mutilate or spindle them in any way. Um, and if your hive is very populous and you're worried that they are going to um, cast secondary swarms, possibly swarm themselves to death, you wanna reduce your queen cells to just one queen cell. I'm always a little bit worried about telling people this because of course, if that queen cell is somehow non-viable, um, your hive may end up being doomed to go hopelessly queenless. 
but the alternative is your hive may swarm it to self to death. So you kind of got to um, look at your risks there. And uh, also bear in mind that if your hive does go hopelessly queenless, you can rescue it with a frame of eggs from another hive or um, that you own, or maybe you can borrow one from your bee buddy. I think that's a great thing to have sort of mutual assistance packed on. And absolutely, absolutely no virgin hunting. Um, do not disturb that hive when you think it might have a virgin queen in it. So if you see no worker brood at all, like I say, this is the confusing part. Um, and you're gonna have to go back and check your notes because um, you don't know whether you're in that final week of queen rearing or if you are, perhaps if you haven't inspected in a while, past that time period and you need to worry that perhaps your hive is hopelessly queenless. So check your notes. Hopefully you did an inspection um, sometime in the previous month or so. Um, was there worker brood about a week ago? Um, if yes, then you're gonna mark your calendar to inspect at least seven days out. If no, then you're gonna start the requeening process, which I think I have a slide in later. Like I said, um, if it's chilly, wet, or windy during that last week when that uh, queen is going to be trying to do her mating flight, you may need to give your hive a little bit more time. Also, as I said before, when you are doing these first inspections after requeening, you're always going to be looking for worker eggs and very, very young larvae. You cannot expect there to be capped brood until 10 days after the new Queen. So if here, if we have a new queen and she's just laying her first few worker eggs, you can see that there won't be any at all that's capped and only a small amount at that at day 10. We don't want to wait that long to check to see whether our hive made a nice new queen for us. Um, here's the thing, hives that have failed to raise a meta queen um, within about a month from that egg, are what's known as hopelessly queenless. Um, and that is because they don't have any, any eggs or any of that um, kind of undifferentiated, uncommitted young larva with which to make another. That is basically a doomed hive that will never make anything again but drones without intervention. So, what if you need to deliberately requeen your hive because you suspect it is hopelessly queenless. Um, so what you would do then is you would go to a queen right hive and move a frame of eggs. I think eggs is easiest because um, otherwise you have to teach yourself how to recognize um, three day or less old brood, which is kind of uh, tricky. Um, so you take that and you move that into the queenless hive and you're gonna mark your calendar to inspect four weeks to a month out. And again, remember when that inspection day arrives, you're gonna be looking for worker eggs again. Um, I like to say that having two hives is kind of like having two candles. If one gets blown out, you can always relight from the other one. Um, same thing with your hives, or like I said, have a bee buddy, have a mentor. Um, if your hive has gone hopelessly queenless, um, ask them for a frame of uh, with eggs on it. All you have to do is pull that frame out of your hive, shake the bees off of it gently, wrap it in a damp towel and drive it over to your hive. Um, it is even possible to send uh, bee eggs in the mail um, it used to be a really common thing, um, again, wrapped in a little piece of damp toweling, um, but honestly, keep it simple and just drive them over in your car. And again, don't be, look, don't be saying I don't have any capped brood, you're looking for eggs, you can't wait to look for capped brood, at that point your hive is probably so hopelessly queenless, um, you're going to have a big, big laying worker problem. And uh, bees that have gone laying worker will resist starting um, and raising a new queen and will reject uh, a mated queen that you give to them in a cage. So this is what young larvae are about. Um, usually you're going to find them fairly close to where the eggs are in your uh, colony, sort of a gradient. They're usually 
quite swimming in a milky sea of bre uh, brood food. And you want ones that aren't yet curved all the way into a C. So this one is too old. These are kind of getting past it. This one's good. It's like a banana shape. It's not properly curled up like a total C. But you can see this is really, really tiny, right? Um, and you don't need a ton to make a queen. They really only need a small patch of either eggs or the super young brood and they will manage to make all the queens that they need. Uh, laying workers. So laying workers could be its own presentation in its own right. Um, just some information here about them because it's very relevant to queen rearing because if you laying workers are what you get if you don't get a queen. You know how they say that experience is what you get when you don't get what you want? Well, laying workers are kind of the crummy thing that happens when you don't get what you want in this case, which is a queen. So laying workers, there's a lot of myths, a lot of misconceptions about this. There's actually always a few laying workers in any hive. Um, there's always a few that have uh, ovaries that are kind of resistant to the pheromone that um, causes their ovaries normally to not develop. So there's always a few of them laying eggs in the hive, but those are policed, um, meaning eaten by the other workers. Um, if you thought human police brutality was bad, uh, bee pl police brutality apparently involves cannibalism. So in a normal hive, there are a few laying workers, but those eggs get eaten by the other workers. And so it's basically a non-event. Um, once your hive doesn't have open worker brood in it, does not have larva in it, um, it doesn't have enough of this pheromone, um, and then the worker ovaries start to grow. Now, it isn't a black and white thing where it's like, oh, everyone's laying worker or everyone's not laying worker. Um, it's kind of like some bees are more susceptible to becoming layer workers than others on an individual level. So it's kind of a problem that gets worse and worse and worse as time drags on without open brood. So about a month without open brood, which is about six weeks, um, after the queen is dead or stopped laying um, is usually when it starts to become a real problem for you. And what you will see then is spotty drone brood in worker cells. Um, it'll be somewhat less spotty in drone cells because the uh, bees are able to lay uh, better in the drone cells. Um, you'll often see multiple eggs in a cell, meaning like three to six, not just the occasional paired egg in cells, and they're usually not centered. That's because the abdomen of a worker bee is really, really short, and she doesn't have those super long, beautiful hind legs like a queen has, and so she's not able to squat into the bottom of that cell properly, and so she ends up laying the eggs kind of on the side uh, more of the cell, not centered. You'll also see crazy things like eggs on top of uh, pollen. And again, uh, this is a sign that things have gone really, really bad. Um, and you've got just tons and tons of laying workers and your hive is basically toast at that point. Now, the really crummy thing about laying workers is that each one of those laying workers gives off a little bit of queen pheromone, uh, which fools the hive into thinking that it has a queen. Um, so they usually will not accept um, a queen that is introduced. Um, and often, even if you give them uh, uh, suitable frames of eggs, they will fail to make um, a queen cell on that first frame of eggs that you gave them. Uh, they might make it if you gave them a second frame after a week. Um, once they've had a, a week's exposure to the open brood in the first frame. Um, but at that point, you're really talking about a very weak hive at that point, because of course, you've been losing bees to old age for six weeks, and now you're not going to have a um, significant amount of new bees for several more weeks anyhow. Um, so you're in a bad situation at that point. So here's some nice pictures. You can see over here, you just have a case where, whoops, queen made a little whoopsie doodle and put two eggs in one cell. But 
everything else looks pretty good, looks pretty normal. Whereas here you're seeing just tons of eggs everywhere. And here you're seeing eggs even on top of pollen in here. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can reform uh, laying workers. Uh, some people recommend shaking out the laying workers um, in your yard, um, believing that the laying workers cannot fly back to the colony. Um, I think it's actually a myth that they can't fly back. I think it has more to do with the fact that if you shake them all out, it, they get so disrupted. And by the time they're back in there, um, are perhaps more willing to accept a queen. Um, I don't like to recommend this method, though it comes up a lot because you know most of us live in suburbia, and I know my neighbors would not appreciate it if I went to the far side of my yard and shook every bee in my hive out onto the ground um, and had tons and tons of bees swirling about. Um, so the methods that I like to recommend is to put the hive with the laying workers on top of a queen right hive with a piece of window screen in between. Um, and then you just give them a top entrance either with a notched inner cover or you can just put uh, three corks or three like good one or two inch rocks in between the inner and outer cover to pop this top up. You just don't wanna, you know, force these poor bees to be locked in here with no way of getting out for a week. So after they've spent a week um, with the window screen here and the uh, brood pheromone is percolated up in here, these girls are usually well reformed because there's a lot of brood in a queen right hive to fix their ovaries. And that was one way that you can get um, enough uh, you can get some use out of those workers as opposed to simply euthanizing them or letting them continue being laying workers, which is basically dooming them to die of uh, parasitic mite syndrome. So you can put them on here and uh, reuse your, your laying workers that way and reform them and then just pull that screen and combine them. And then, you know, they've contributed a little bit to the uh, well-being of this hive. And maybe in three more weeks or so, you could try splitting your hive again. Um, another thing that you can also do is, like I said, you can add a frame of young worker brood and eggs um, to the laying worker hive until they start a new cell um, and raise a new queen. Um, and then, of course, you got to time out when you're going to check your bees on that. Um, so good resources. Um, obviously, any, any good uh, beekeeping book will have those developmental charts that you can photocopy and put in your uh, kit. Um, there's this great uh, presentation on the day of life in the young honeybee queen by Dr. Tarpy. It's on YouTube. Um, another one on uh, well-mated queens produce the busiest bees. Um, and this was a really great uh, site talking about uh, laying workers. That's really helpful for understanding what's going on there. Um, and that's about it. And Basically, patience and you will end up with a queen almost always. I just want to add that one of the major ways that people lose queens if they didn't do something silly like opening up their hive at the wrong time um, is they do get lost sometimes during the mating flight. So you can do nothing wrong and occasionally um, end up with a queenless hive. Um, often the queen can go out and get lost um, coming back or you know maybe she gets eaten by a bird or a dragonfly and that's just something that happens in nature and it's something that you have to be aware of and be on guard against because like I said if she doesn't come back you need to requeen that hive um, so that you don't end up with a hive full of laying workers but nine times out of ten um, at least if you do the right things, your hive will produce a perfectly good new queen for you. So thank you very much. Um, sorry we didn't have the promised presentation tonight, um, but I hope this is helpful for some people. Great, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, does anybody have questions for Elizabeth? And then after that, we'll 
go do the raffle. Wyatt asked, oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, I'm a little bit uh, confused about the 30 day thing. So I understand that the very first she could be laying was 30 days, but then when you were talking about um, not having queen right, having work laying workers, you have to be worried about after 30 days or, or no. is it after five or six weeks? Uh, it is after 30 days without any open worker brood in the hive. So here's the thing. If you're talking about from when the last egg was laid in a hive, you will still have open worker brood. See here we have young larva, young larva, old larva, um, old larva, old larva, and then capped. Okay, so for 10 days, um, even when the hive is queenless, they still have that open um, worker brood. And the effect of it is that that pheromone is lasting. Now, as we get down to like 31 days, 32 days, now it's starting to wear off and you've got more and more of those workers becoming lame workers at that point. So it is, um, starts to become a problem about 30 days after the last bit of worker brood is capped. Does that make sense? Yeah. <clears throat> so for 40 days about. Yeah. So you're talking about, I like to say it's about six weeks after your queen was dead or otherwise removed from the hive. <clears throat> Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, if you see that there is no queen uh, at the end of 30 days, um, do you have any kind of like movement you can do provoke bees to show that they have queen, it just does not lay yet, or if they don't have so because I usually don't wait until 30 days and um, until all brood is gone. And I'm trying to make sure before. So I usually give them frame from other hive with eggs, uh, a little bit brood and see if they start the queen cells. It means they don't have queen. If they don't start it, they kept it. So it means everything is okay and I can happily sleep <laughs> after. Yeah, I hear you there, Ella. I didn't include that in this presentation. Um, so I felt I was maybe already losing people on this, but um, one thing you can do is if you get to um, your point of inspection, you're about 30 days in um, and you're not sure you can't quite find those eggs. Maybe the weather was a little bit off that week and you're just not sure whether she made it back or whether she got mated, is you can always introduce a frame with eggs and young larvae on it at that time. It won't hurt anything. Um, and then go back and check in another week and see, first of all, you know, look for eggs on those other frames and see whether they started cells. If they started cells, then you know that something happened and they did not successfully requeen and you're going to have to give it um, from that point another three weeks so uh, four weeks from putting in the frame with eggs in it great point yeah thank you and let's see we have some questions yep it's why it asked about supering um so how soon how long do you wait before you super Oh, for supering on a queenless hive or just generally waiting uh, for Why it got a nuke. So this would be a, a brand new nuke installed. Why are you in an eight frame or a 10 frame? Eight frame. Okay. Um, so okay. go ahead, Elizabeth. 
Okay, so uh, what I would concentrate with a new nuke um, on, or and this applies to package people as well, is you want to get all of your brood boxes uh, fully drawn out. So once your first brood box has about 70% or seven out of 10 of the frames uh, drawn, um, then you want to look at adding your next uh, brood box on there. And there's some manipulations you can do to make sure that that uh, works well and is successful. And then once that is drawn 70%, seven out of 10 frames, then um, that's usually when you start thinking about adding your super at that point. Why it's an eight frame though, so six frames out of, around, around six of your eight frames should be drawn. Oh yeah, but it's a, oh, sorry, I didn't hear there was eight frames, sorry. Yeah. Yes, six out of eight or seven out of 10, depending on what you're doing. Cool. And then somebody asked if this would be recorded and put on the Guild website. Elizabeth, um, we, it, it is recorded, um, but I, I need to talk to Elizabeth whether whether or not she's okay with us putting it on the Guild website. Sure, we'll, we'll put it up. We'll talk okay. later, but okay. I think we'll put it up. All right, cool. <laughs> um, any, and I also answered Mark had a, Mark, you had a question earlier. I had to make some assumptions about what you were asking about. Um, you're asking about high winds and how that affects something. And I was guessing it was queen, uh, the virgin queen mating flights, but if it was something else, please speak up. Yeah, actually I was just uh, listening to Elizabeth and then uh, up in the Laurelwood area, we've had off and on high winds for last couple of weeks. So we're just kind of interested to find out, you know, how that affects everything. Yeah, sometimes if it is um, very high winds, they will postpone that mating flight. And um, if they have to postpone it uh, more than a couple of weeks, they will actually never mate and they will become what's known as a drone laying queen um, for all their lives. So um, I would say that if you're dealing with that sort of situation, take a page from Allah's book and um, when you think you're at about the 30 to 35 day range um, and you don't see any eggs in there, put a frame of eggs and young larvae in from another hive and see what they do with it. Um, that way you will have staved off them going laying worker um, for a little while longer. And you'll also have given them another chance to start a queen if they have been unsuccessful. All right, very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, um, are there any other questions or should we go ahead and start the raffle?